this idea that the law is nailed to the cross. Is then we wait. Where did he get it? So he calls me. Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians. And so who's this? Who's this? Timothy, Romans. Who's all this? What's this? Who's that? So Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who's your master? He said, Jesus. What does he say? You're contradicting Jesus. And Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. Master is Jesus. What he tells you, I say, I listen to my master, Jesus. He never had the pig. He, none of his disciples ever touched that pork. You call it pork, ham, bacon, whatever you call it. He never touched that stuff. None of his disciples ever touched it. And you are all pig eaters. Christians. Where did you get this? He said, Peter had a dream. On that dream, now you eat pigs. When my master never ate it, he wouldn't eat it. It was abhorrent him. He killed 2,000 pigs, one hit. He destroyed them all. You know that? But now you don't listen to him. You are now living in the grace. I said, are you circumcised? He says, no. I said, why aren't you? No, it's a major commandment. God gave. Your Lord was Christ. Jesus Christ was circumcised. I said, what is good for your God should be good for you. No, you won't circumcise. Why won't you? This is the law of God. It entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever. And you claim to be spiritual descendants. How does that absolve you? It is Jesus was circumcised and you are not. He said, no. He says, Paul said, circumcision, circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. I said, Jesus says, not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law. Can't you see? You are not following Jesus. You're following Paul, Paul, Paul. He is the real founder of Christianity. Paul, not Jesus. Therefore, your great countryman, Michael H. Hart, he wrote a book on the top 100, the greatest 100 in history, the most influential 100 people from Adam to current time. And he gives us a list, the 100, the top 100, of the greatest 100 in history. Michael H. Hart, New York, of the Hart Publishing Company. And in that list of the most influential men, after giving the list of 100 names, he puts them in the order of seniority. Number one, number five, number 50, number 99, who, who, who? And he put Muhammad number one. The most influential man in history, according to Michael S. Hart, an American, in America, publishing a book of 572 pages, retailing about 10 years ago for $15, which I paid for it. Maybe it cost 50 today, I don't know. He says, Muhammad is the most influential man in history. And his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, number three. His God and Savior, number three. And he gives reasons. Not because some Arab bribed him. So here's 10,000 for you. Say a good word about Muhammad. Put him number one. We give you 100,000, put him number one in your book. No, no Arabs could ever think of that. It's possible, but not probable for an Arab to do that. Why does he put Jesus Christ as God and Savior number three? He said, you see, the honor for Christianity is to be shared between Paul and Jesus. Actually, Paul is the real founder of Christianity. Listen. So follow Jesus. Listen to him. You can't help being a Muslim. You'll be a Muslim through and through. But you don't want to listen to Jesus. Read the books. Listen to the sermons. It's Paul, 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 not Jesus. What did Jesus say? He says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. But the cowards that we are, we are not prepared to pick up the cross. First of all, thanks very much for coming tonight. Um, I understand from other teachings that I've heard about Islam that most of the Islam people would agree with certain things in the Bible that they would agree with what is in the Quran. Is that um, in the Christian teaching, it says that Jesus, according to the Gospels, as, as you've already talked about, did in fact die on the cross and was the payment for all of our sins, which through him is the way for us to be able to have his righteousness and therefore be perfect in God's sight. I was curious as to the view in the Quran as to the crucifixion, if indeed it did or did not happen. Thank you. With regards to the crucifixion, the Quran is very explicit. Very explicit. It says, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That they said in boast that we kill Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. In answer to that, God says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ That they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. 
ولكن شبه لهم but it was made to appear to them so وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَقٍ مِّنْهُمْ and those who stood therein are full of doubts مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ they have no certain knowledge إِلَّا تِبَا الزَّن they only follow conjecture guess what وَمَا قَتَلُهُ يَقِينًا for a surety they killed him not that's the Muslim position we say آمَنَّا صَدَّقْنَا we hear and we affirm but now my sister says, look, we have a record. The Christian says, we have a written record. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, these 27 books of the New Testament. And we have hundreds of prophecies fulfilling this event. My response is, I said, look, my brothers and sisters, you are reading this book, the Bible, in your own mother tongue. And I am claiming that you are understanding the exact opposite of what you are reading. Not just misunderstanding. We can have a lot of misunderstanding, but exact opposite. If you read in the Bible, for example, that thou shalt not commit adultery, you are understanding that thou shalt commit adultery. So how can we be such zombies? What do you take us for? You know, we are the people who run on the moon. You know, we got the whole world in, a, in the palm of our hand. You have. The Bay of Bengal tragedy. See, America warned Pakistan. They said, look, the tidal waves are coming. Beyond God, they didn't hit the warning, the fools. My people, they didn't hit the warning. And Hundreds of thousands more people died. They warned the Jews in 1973 that the Arabs are on the move. They didn't hit the warning. So we know the Arabs. Every time they want to do anything, they make a big noise beforehand. So we will do this and we'll do that. And by then he said, we'll give it to them. So they didn't hit the warning. First time the Arabs caught the Jews off guard. They broke the Barlev line. First time they took the initiative because they didn't hit the American warning. You got the whole world in the palm of your hand. And yet this same nation He's reading the book in his own mother tongue and he's understanding the exact opposite word of what you're reading. This is not just a charge, an allegation. I prove it to you in two minutes. I said, you know, Jesus returned to that upper room after his alleged crucifixion where they had the Last Supper. Those of you who know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. He goes in and he wishes his disciples in the Hebrew language, Shalom Aleichum, which means same as Salam Aleichum in Arabic, peace be unto you. And when he said, peace be unto you, his disciples were terrified. So I'm asking, why were they terrified? Because when you meet your long-lost master, your uncle, your grandfather, the Arab and the Jew, we embrace one another, we kiss one another. I felt very funny the first time the Arabs did it to me. But I'm getting used to it now. You see, I said, that's what the Jews did 2,000 years ago, and the Arabs did 2,000 years ago. Instead of doing that, they're terrified. I said, why were they terrified? So the man knows his Bible. He said, look, Luke chapter 24, verse 36, he tells us that they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. Is that the answer? Yes, that's what the Bible says. Luke says, they thought he was a spirit. So I said, did he look like a spirit? And by now, for 40 years I'm talking, not one Christian has ever told me yes. If he did, if you do, I said, what does a spirit look like? If he said he looked like a spirit, I said, what does a spirit look like? Tell me now. No. Everybody says no. He didn't. So I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? Puzzled. Puzzled. So I said, you see, the reason is that the disciples of Jesus, they had heard from hearsay people talking that the master was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay people were talking that he had given up the ghost. You know, the spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay that now he's dead and buried for three days. All the knowledge was from hearsay, people talking. Because they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses to the happenings. Because Mark chapter 14, verse 50, he tells us that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All. I said, does all mean all in your language, you English man? He said, yes. That they were not there. All the knowledge was from hearsay. On hearsay knowledge, if you heard about a man, your master, who did and buried for three days, you expect him to be stinking in his grave. Such a person, when you see, naturally you're terrified. You think he's a ghost, a spook, spirit. So Jesus wants to assure them that they're not what they're thinking. So he says, Unzuru ila yadayya wa rijalayya. He says, behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa, that it is I myself. Husuni wanzuru. He says, handle me and see. Fa inna ruha laysa lahu lahum wa izamun. For a spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. Handle me and see. A spirit, a spirit has no flesh and bone. A spirit, I mean any spirit, is an indefinite article. In your language, any spirit. And this is an axiomatic truth. 
You don't have to prove it to the atheist, the agnostic, the Hindu, the Jew, the Muslim. Universally, we say spirit has no flesh and bones. If you get got flesh and bones, you're not a spirit. No convincing required. Why does he go out of his way to tell them so? Because they're thinking that he is. So he said, the spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. And they felt him. And they believed not for joy, meaning that they were overjoyed and wondered, what happened, man? We thought the man was dead and buried. To assure them further that they are wrong in their understanding, he said, Aindakum hahuna ta'am. Have you got here anything to eat? Fanawaluhu juz'am min samakin wa shay'in min shahadi asalin fa akhaza wa akala kuddamahum. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and he ate in the very sight to prove what? That is a ghost, that is spook, his spirit is resurrected. No. And the same fellow man, damn fools, what are you afraid of me for? Handle me and see. And look at the post-crucifixion events. He is ever in disguise, ever in disguise. His own disciples can't recognize him on the way to Emmaus. Ever in disguise, he never went to the temple of Jerusalem. He never went and showed them, said, look, here I am. He gave a sign to the Jews, the sign of Jonah, that I will be like Jonah, and I'm reasoning with the people. What was the sign of Jonah? Look, it's another topic. I dealt with it last night with Professor Douglas. Get the videotape and I deal with this more extensively. Or get this book absolutely free. Crucifixion or crucifixion. Sounds the same, but it is not. Have a look. Crucifixion, the first fiction is F-I-X-I-O-N. To fix up a person on the cross and kill him. That's crucifixion. The second is cruci, F-I-C-T-I-O-N, fiction. Means a fairy tale. And the Quran says, illatiba zan, the only following conjecture, guesswork, fiction. I prove it to you from the Bible. I give you 30 different reasons from the Bible that Jesus Christ was neither killed nor crucified. You must be big enough, men enough to read it, women enough to read it, and then come back to me. And I tell you in your own language, as if somebody has made zombies out of you. You read something, and you're understanding something else. You read there again and again. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. It says, and he gave many convincing proofs, Jesus, many convincing proofs that he was alive. A L I V E, alive. That's the word there. He was alive. Mary Magdalene, after her experience with Jesus, she returns and tells the others that he is alive. A L I V E, alive, and they believe not. The two from Emmaus return to that upper room, telling the others that he is alive, and they believe not. These eight or ten telling Thomas he wasn't there at the first meeting, he said, Look, Jesus is alive, and he believed not. By God, I don't know what you're reading. In English, A-L-I-V-E, alive, A-L-I-V-E, alive, not resurrect, not resurrected, not res alive, 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 alive. And you say resurrected, resurrected, resurrected. You concoct a word which is not there, and then you thumb suck it. And then you want the whole world to thumb suck it as well. I say, there's something wrong. Somebody has made zombies out of you in your own mother tongue. Come, talk to me. Bring your, 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 your Jerry Falwells and your Pat Robertsons and... Uh, who else is there? Billy Graham and uh, Jimmy Swaggart. Bring them, arrange four meetings in the United States on topics like, is the Bible God's word? Was Christ crucified? Is Jesus God? And I am prepared to pay any one of these $10,000 per performance, just one hour. In Madison Square Garden, I give you 10000 And I will organize the meeting. We need four meetings like that in the United States. Let the country know, these 240 million people, that look, you are being led by the nose by some list of the most influential men. After giving the list of 100 names, he puts them in the order of seniority. Number one, number five, number 50, number 99, who, who, who? And he put Muhammad number one. The most influential man in history, according to Michael, Michael S. Hart, an American in America, publishing a book of 572 pages, retailing about 10 years ago for $15, which I paid for it. Maybe it cost 50 today, I don't know. He says, Muhammad is the most influential. This idea that the law is nailed to the cross is done away with. Where did he get it? So he quotes me. Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians. And so who's this? Who's this? Timothy, Romans. Who's all this? Who's this? Who's that? It's a Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who is your master? You say, Jesus. What does he say? You're contradicting Jesus. And Jesus said, the disciple is not, association is nothing. 
as as Jesus says not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law can't you see you are not following Jesus you're following Paul 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 he is the real founder of Christianity Paul not Jesus therefore your great countryman Michael H Hart he wrote a book on the top 100 the greatest 100 in history the most influential 100 people from Adam to current time and he gives us a list the 100 the top 100 are the greatest 100 in history Michael H Hart New York of the Hart Publishing Company and in that greater than the master master is Jesus what he tells you I say I listen to my master Jesus he never had the pig he none of his disciples ever touched that pork you call it pork ham bacon whatever you call it he never touched that stuff none of his disciples ever touched it and you are all pig eaters Christians where did you get this he said Peter had a dream on that dream now you eat pigs when my master never had it he wouldn't eat it it was abhorrent to him he killed 2,000 pigs one hit he destroyed them all you know that but now you don't listen to him you are now living in the grace I said are you circumcised he says no I said why aren't you no, it's a major commandment God gave your Lord was Christ Jesus Christ was circumcised I said what is good for your God should be good for you no you won't circumcise why won't you this is the law of God he entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever and you claim to be a spiritual descendant how does that absolve you it is Jesus was circumcised and you are not he said no he says Paul said circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision